dear students today we will study about the family characteristics of euphobiaceae so this euphobiaceae is very interesting family because in your syllabus it is the first family coming under subclass so like that of any taxonomic family first we will discuss about its systematic position so euphobiaceae uh, coming under the class dicotyledons subclass monoclamidae series unisexuals family euphobiaceae so what is this uh, uh, monoclamidae characteristics like that of the gamopetale here this subclass monoclamidae is with a some distinguishable identification characteristics that is flowers usually with a one whorl of perianth and it is not true for each and every individual uh, plant coming under this subclass but uh, generally speaking we can see most of the members coming under this subclass is with the uh, uh, presence of this perianth that is one whorl of perianth commonly uh, sepaloid or sometimes there is no such uh, sepaloid perianths that is looking like sepals and uh, coming under uh, this family there are many uh, series that is nearly uh, that is uh, exactly eight series and uh, 36 families and among this uh, series this particular uh, family phobiaceae is coming under <coughs> unisexuals that is here that series character is the flowers are unisexuals that is ovary monocarpillary or carpels may be more than one sometimes united and coming under uh, we can see nine families euphobiaceae starting from euphobiaceae so uh, for you uh, in your syllabus only one family is there that is euphobiaceae so that is about the details regarding systematic position once again i will repeat the systematic position that is class dicotyledons subclass monoclamidae remember the characteristics of monoclamidae then series unisexuals family euphobiaceae okay coming to uh, the um, explanations related to habit habitat uh, and vegetative characters and floral characters so in this uh, initial slide we can see a beautiful uh, photograph and this is the euphobias euphobia pulcherima so in our area that is in uh, near to uh, normally occurring uh, plant this one it is very common in, in some of the uh, hilly areas uh, near to uh, that uh, Kilimanjaro area then Arinad area it is in, uh, normally growing in wild conditions um, okay uh, then uh, some of the hybrid plants are there available in uh, nurseries so it is nothing but this uh, this is a beautiful actually these are the colorful leaves okay and in our slides we will study in detail about this floral characteristics so first we will discuss about the um, this uh, vegetative characteristics of the family and uh, before that uh, about the, its distribution the family is uh, a nearly large family about uh, nearly 313 genera and uh, 8100 species so it is normally present everywhere and but also in, in such condition also that is it is normally cosmopolitan in uh, distribution and uh, of course it is allows to grow in mesophytic climatic conditions that is most of them are confined to tropics okay and coming to its uh, um, habit that is the external appearance of the plant where there we can see herbs shrubs uh, herbs shrubs uh, sometimes trees climbers and so many uh, wide variety of uh, morphological organizations we can see about this uh, habit or family types here the herbs for example uh, euphobia hutta so it's a practical specimen and uh, the photograph is 
uh, uh, close up one actually it is very small tree roadside plant and uh, in our uh, um, Trivandrum area it is plenty near to uh, any uh, uh, highways and uh, there we can see this presence of this euphobia hitta in bunches and um, Akalifa indica that is in Malayalam it is Poochawal okay it is with uh, the um, a catkin a perfect catkin type of inflorescence and uh, they are uh, annual or sometimes perennial herbs in case of shrubs Euphobia pulcherima uh, already uh, told about this plant uh, that is Euphobia pulcherima then Pedilanthus is there and Jetropha species and Euphobia thiricali and uh, uh, here we can see this. This is Euphobia thiricoli. It is showing so many xerophytic adaptations. Um, and uh, this is also common in our area. And uh, other uh, plants photos are there in the previous slides. That is then a tree example, Philanthus, uh, oh, sorry, shrubs example already told that Jetropha is, uh, um, that is, uh, uh, famous for uh, that is this uh, green patrol that is Jetropha species and uh, tree species of course it is Philanthus emblica that is gooseberry then small tree that is resinous communis try to remember these uh, names because this family may ask for former question or uh, 15 marks as a type questions resinous communis that is cast up then Hevia brasiliensis, that is a large tree, that is rubber tree. That is, uh, it can grow near nearly six, 60 to 100 feet in height. Okay, 8 to 12 feet in girth. Then Tragia species. Tragia species are the um, climb, climb, climber examples of this family, Tragia. This is also present in our area. Then uh, members possess large uh, laticiferous vessels that is a family characteristic itself that is previously Aposinaceae is also with uh, some sort of lactose tissue laticiferous tissue and uh, here in the Cephobiaceae of course this uh, Hevia brasiliensis is there that is rubber tree is there so it is a family character most probably 99 percentage of uh, species is with uh, the laticiferous vessels or canals or sometimes laticiferous cells okay and uh, this is euphobia thiricoli and uh, coming to its root and uh, stem uh, this uh, um, alignment problem that is root and stem okay and uh, next to the, the last root is actually side heading and here the um, root system is uh, tap root and tap root system of course it is um, coming under monocotyledon dicot dicotyledon so it is of course it is tap tap root system but here we can see uh, an economic uh, economically very important crop is there that is manico manicotesculenda that is cassava or tapioca that is maricini and um, manicot uh, palmetia are also tuberous um, but uh, it is rich in starch but it is not using for this type of um, staple food some uh, factory purpose or production of starch we are using this manicot palmetia and herbaceous or woody or erect uh, climber here this is the tragia okay it's a climber Hmm. and um, the stem is branched uh, coming to the stem characteristics stem is highly branched and cylindrical angular or sometimes flat here we can see this uh, stem okay and it is very um, um, compact arrangement the stem is highly branched and the resinous communis is with a hollow stem okay Resinous communis is castor plant and it is with a hollow stem. And many uh, stems possess pines, euphobia species, uh, euphobia millis there and uh, here there are fully plenty of uh, spines present in the stem and uh, stem is fleshy green and cactus like in appearance in euphobia 
mealy and this one is euphobia mealy it's a very familiar plant it's our garden plant and it is many varieties are there and uh, um, uh, about its latex some poisonous content is there some different opinions are also there <clears throat> anyway the plant is very um, plant is with very beautiful flowers um, wide variety of flowers and it is euphobia mealy and this is castor that is resinous communis okay and these are the example then coming to the leaf arrangement so leaf arrangement is usually alternate opposite also we can see this euphobia hirta here we can see this euphobia hirta the leaves are opposite it is not opposite decusite like that of rubiaceae here only opposite leaves then this one is the pedilanthus in the previous slide uh, i told about this pedilanthus and here also it is very common garden plant or uh, <clears throat> growing for the beautiful flowers and the, this plant is with uh, plenty of latex vessels <clears throat> and then pedilanthus the leaves are arranged alternatively see this is alternate leaves <clears throat> and uh, usually the leaves are simple but in some uh, they are deeply incised or uh, this uh, palmately uh, palmate appearance that is example manicot leaves uh, and uh, resinous leaves and in many euphobia uh, species the leaves are scaly and caducus that is the seropheic adaptations and in many cases the leaves are reduced to spines but in few cases the leaves are replaced by clad outs so from this itself we can uh, see there are wide varieties of uh, characteristics in different species but some of the common characters are there and th that's why it is coming under the same family okay so uh, that's why in this uh, family may be asked for essay type questions because it's many uh, variations we can see in this uh, characteristics and leaves are stipulate in jatropha species and uh, here uh, that is avanak in malayalam jatropha avanak uh, it is not avanak that is this jatropha kadalavanak kadalavanak okay and uh, the stipules become hair like and, uh, and in euphobia species <coughs> they are represented uh, by glands and spines here photograph is there that is this is a close up view of this jetropha plant jetropha plant here we can see this in shady part you can see this the stipules are highly branched here uh, that hair like uh, branched uh, stipules we can see okay and uh, here this euphobia species here also that is euphobia uh, parai euphobia parai this is here the stipule is sometimes uh, some um, uh, uh, this glandular and spinous see this its bulged portion is there so because it is uh, 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 acting like glands and that uh, protruded portion of this glandular stipules is with a small spines also so this is a species euphobia parai and these are the up to this we can see this uh, vegetative characteristics and starting from the habit itself we can see wide varieties that is herbs shrubs uh, woody climbers are there small trees and large trees are there and leaf characteristics mainly alternate and opposite leaves then coming to stipule organization there we can see wide varieties then uh, mm, uh, that is uh, sometimes these stipules become um hairy are highly branched and sometimes glandular and sometimes spinous spinous and these are the vegetative characteristics coming to floral characteristics and it is quite easy because in the uh, previous introductory classes while you are studying about the special type of inflorescence you studied the cyathem inflorescence okay and uh, uh, coming to inflorescence there also we can see many many variations uh, it may be racemose or cymose okay sometimes complex 
in new but in euphobia species there are many species are available in our area euphobia euphobia pulcherma euphobia reticulate uh, this one um, euphobia mili uh, euphobia um, uh, this one um, euphobia um, uh, excuse uh, you uh, that is one species that is euphobia heterophila okay in our area itself we can see more than three species that is in euphobia the inflorescence is cyathea this is the modification of psi okay and this uh, cyathea inflorescence it is considered as cyme of cymes cymes that is um, inside the cyathea inflorescence here we can see this is the uh, cyathea inflorescence that is uh, we, here we can see the bracts are joined together to form cup like structure and inside the cup uh, it is called uh, that is this cup is uh, it, actually it is uh, produced as a result of fusion of bracts and this cup is called uh, involucre okay and suppose we are taking a cross section there we can see a single female flower and many male flowers but this male flowers are actually represented by anthers but when we are closely wa watching the anthers uh, we can see a, a petiole like portion that's why the anther is considered as considered as male flower okay and uh, female flower single one uh, so that is and uh, outside we can see the uh, here we can see this yellow part that is actually nectary okay it's a glad and thus uh, these are uh, related to that previous introductory class about your uh, inflorescences and just i repeated that one so in euphobia the inflorescence is cyathea and this is a modified modified cyme or uh, cyme of cymes because inside the involucre the stamens are arranged in in, in cymose manner that is the two scorpioid uh, manner inside that but here uh, taking ls we we can't recognize that uh, scorpioid pattern so that's why it is called a cyme of cymes so cyathea inflorescence male flowers represented by stalked stamens that's why it is called considered as um, stalk means that is uh, it is not petiole pedicel um, that's why it is considered as male flowers and found arranged around a central stalked female flower and the female flower consists of gynecium only here we can see uh, tricarpillary syncarpus ovule here only is uh, stigma style is also there and it is also representing the male female flower so the complete inflorescence looks like a single flower so the bracts being arranged like a perianth and it forms the involucre okay and uh, coming to other type of inflorescences so in the inflorescence uh, sometimes it's a carkin type example a califa spida that is puchaval and uh, in croton um, and resinous that is in uh, croton plant and also in Avanaka, that is resinous, the flowers are arranged in terminal, terminal uh, racimos pattern. Here we can see this, that one. Then that, uh, that is terminal racimos. Younger flowers are present on the tip young, and older flowers. Here it is not a cyathea. See. And uh, then uh, in manihot, that is in tapioca, the flowers are being arranged in racemes. Here you can see this uh, one that is the tropa example is here and here we can see this smaller seams that is manifotus gulenda flower. Okay. So here we can see varied uh, types of uh, inflorescence that is euphobia species is there are so many species are there all are with the cyathium inflorescence that is special kind of inflorescence. So, cyathium is considered as a cyme of science and uh, rest we can see this uh, uh, racemose type is also there. Then next uh, coming to flower characteristics. 
So the flowers are always unisexual because it is coming and this family is coming under the series unisexual. So unisexual flowers are there. They are much reduced and may be monoecious or sometimes dioecious. In euphobia species, each male flower is represented by a single stalked stamen. The flowers are incomplete. Okay, remember the flowers are incomplete because there is no essential walls. But some species is with the, for example, in Rosinus, it is complete. So the flowers are incomplete, regular, actinomorphic and hypogynous. And here we can see this is Euphobia heterophylla. This is your practical specimen. Here we can, in our area, it is plenty. And so it, this is the habit. And this is its uh, Sayata inflorescence. Here we can see a prominent nectary is there. And this is the female flower. And here in the cross section we can see so many stamens. Uh, 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 sorry, anthers are representing the male flowers. So the, here this, uh, this one, the female flower is somewhat small. Okay. And this is about the flower characteristics. And this is the um, heterophylla that is Sayate inflorescence. Here we can see this tricarpillary syncarpus ovary is very prominent. See that involucre is very small here. But only first in first sight we will see only that uh, tricarpillary ovary. Okay. Suppose you are watching through a dissection microscope, we can see that uh, Sayatium structure. And next is, it is the common introduction for this flower. Next we will study about the calyx and corolla. So in majority of cases, either calyx or corolla, that is the mon monoclamidia character, a calyx or corolla or both are absent. And in that place, we can see the perianth is there. That's why it is called monoclamidia. Hmm? And in Euphobia hutta, both the walls of calyx and corolla are absent. In Euphobia hutta, that is a previous slide, uh, uh, that herbaceous plant, that is Euphobia hutta, both the whole uh, walls of uh, calyx and corolla are absent. But in resinous communis, that is Avanaka, the calyx is present and corolla is absent. But in calyx and corolla are present in proton and zetropha. Here we can see this zetropha uh, in the garima. And it's very beautiful garden plant. Here we can see very colorful um, uh, non-essential worlds are there. Hmm? And resinous communis, that is the red color, actually it is not petal, it is sepals. Okay. And uh, zetropha. Then perian. In acalypha indica, that is puchaval. Uh, the perianth is represented by four minute sepaloid petals. And these are all some variations. Okay. In philanthus, that is uh, Nelika, only sepaloid perianth is there. That is, uh, we are not able to recognize uh, petal or sepal. So, the, the that world is called perianth. And uh, this perianth uh, resembles more like that of the sepal. Then it is called a sepaloid perianth. Okay, and uh, in euphobia, the perianth is absent or represented by tiny scaly structures. The perianth consists of four to five um, uh, petal like structures, and uh, the calyx and corolla consists of four or five sepals or petals. So, estivation is valvate or imbricate. And coming to uh, uh, andrisium and gynesium. Andrisium and gynesium. First, we will study about the andrisium. Here, uh, it is a Sayate inflorescence, and here the prominent part is gynesium. But actually, uh, I used this photograph to show you the anthers. Here, that uh, uh, anthers are yellow in color, and that is this is the line diagram. And here, we can see this filament, and this is the pedicel. A small uh, intersecting wall is here. That's why the stamen. Um, a stamen is considered as the male flower. Okay. And collective, all other characters are there, but a pedicel is there. That is why we are considering it as a male flower. <coughs> so, in resinous species, usually five stamens and jetropha, there are arranged in two worlds. The stamens are indefinite in uh, croton and the filaments may be free or united. The others are dithecus. See this dithecus condition. And uh, 
they dehys either by apical pores or by transverse longitudinal slits. And coming to gynesium, here we can see this prominent gynesium and it is represented by um, a single ovary and three carpals, tricarpillary, syncarpus that is fused, trilocular that is three chambered superior ovary. As it is superior there is no doubt because and the, the ovary portion is protruding from the sciathem itself. So, it is uh, superior. So, each locule consists of uh, one or two pendulous anatropous ovules. The placentation of this uh, ovary is uh, axial placentation. And coming to fruit types, that is mainly we can see uh, two main types of fruits that is uh, droop and also that is, a, so that is the um, uh, schizocarpic fruit type is also there that is it is called a rekma okay uh, rekma and uh, rekma fruit is present in this uh, resinous fruit this is resinous avanak fruit that is and what is this rekma the fruit break and dehys into one seeded cocci. Cocci means separate cell. Here, this, this is a dried condition and it is break up open um, that is into uh, slit uh, into uh, different sessions. Each session is called a coccus or cocci and it holds a single seed. And such type of fruit is termed as rekma, which is a characteristic of resinous species. That fill and the semblica that is this uh, nilica, cotton nilica, and it is a perfect droop. Okay, that uh, nearly uh, two types that is rekma or schizocarpic fruit and also droop. And pollination, of course, it is endomophilus. Here we can see this cyathium inflorescence, it is euphobia pulcherima. Okay, then the nectar is with the plenty of nectar, that is why. Endomophilus pollination is possible. And this seed is endospermic. Here, this is the castor seed that is resinous communis. And here, we can see this beautiful uh, design. And suppose we are cut opening the seed, we can see endosperm is there. So, endospermous seed is endospermous. And this is the um, floral diagram related to this <coughs> sayati inflorescence. And here this is the outer wall, uh, actually it is representing the bract and this bracts are um, joined together to form this uh, involucre. And inside centrally located female uh, flower, that is it is trilocular uh, condition. Uh, then we can see at five corners, five points, the stem, the uh, stamens are arranged or the male flowers are arranged in a scorpioid manner hmm? scorpioid manner that's why it is called a cyme of cymes okay mm, this is a, a non cyathemic example that is this resinous communis that is female uh, flowers are there male flowers separately and it is male flower floral diagram and uh, but that tendency is there, that is stamen arrangement, that tendency is there. And here also we can see the female flower is with the trilocular syncarpus condition. Okay, these are the common characters of these plants. But here it is not a cyathem inflorescence. Then uh, coming to the economic importance of this family and it is... Uh, very, uh, the economic importance is very common for us because commercial uh, uses are there, edible, uh, edible plants are there, then medicinal plants are there, timber and ornamentals also there. Commercial purpose that is rubber, rubber plant, that is Hevia brasiliensis, it is a source of uh, normal rubber or para rubber. And uh, one more thing is their manihot glaciovi. It is the source of Sira rubber. And this many of Manihot uh, Glaciovi is also common for, common for our area. And in next class, I will put the 
photos of economically important plants separately. Then edible manicotta sculenda that is maracini and it is cultivated for its large tuberous roots which makes valuable um, staple food. Then medicinal purpose is there of course philanthus amaris is used uh, in jaundice. Then uh, philanthus emblica that is indica. Mm, then uh, it is the constituent part of triphala. Mm. Nellika, Tanika, Kadaka, that is Trifala. Among that, Nellika is Philanthus and it is also used as a food material or oh, the pickle for, for preparing Kulna Mena, that um, speciality um, that is the pickle for pickle uh, making. Okay. So, it is also in uh, with uh, economical importance. Then castor oil is extracted from resinous communis and it is uh, normally used for purgative. Okay. Then uh, root of Euphobia hirta is taken by uh, some tri tribals uh, for the treatment of uh, vomiting. Then seeds of Jetropha carcass. That is Pachilla petrol, that is green petrol. Yield an oil which is used externally to cure skin diseases, Jetropha carcass is also with medicinal properties. Then timber, uh, wood of euphobia, some of the euphobia species is valuing or uh, used as timber. Then ornamental purpose that is euphobia pulcherima, euphobia um, milli. Pidilanthus, these are all used as uh, ornamental plants. Okay, and uh, this somewhat a larger family. And uh, from this, what are the diagnostic characters to identify this family members? What are the diagnostic or distinguishable characteristics? That is, presence of milky or watery latex is a must thing. Then, leaves, symbol, compound usually alternate and stipulate. Flowers unisexual and monochlamydias. Inflorescence of various types are there, that is, racemi is there, cymos type is there, or cyathium type is there. Then, always that female Ganesian part, that is, it is tricarpillary, um, syncarpus, trilocular, and superior ovary with ovules on as axial placenta. So, fruit is rachma or berry. So, it is also an identifying characteristic. Then, um, with these characteristics, you can recognize this family. Okay. And uh, uh, try to study this uh, family and uh, diagnostic characteristics and uh, what are the specialities of stipules. Then, uh, xerophytic uh, plant examples likewise okay sayati inflorescence okay thank you try to study well and if you are having any doubt please ask in google classroom